Oh. Hi guys. Well, now that the storm of the century has blown through Ithaca, New York, good lord, we can finally get around to our opening summer of 2021 chronicle of the collapse here on this muggy Monday evening, June 21st. 2021. Uh, welcome to the summer of 2021. I guess it was 89 today. The high tomorrow in Ithaca, New York, 61 with a low of 44. So that will be the second day of summer. So uh, I want to thank Alert Tribes member right up down the street from me, Brother JJ, sending me Today's Chronicles of a Clueless Effing Moron for a Laugh. Well, you know that thin line between uh, laughter and tears down here in the Demosphere. Guys, I was really planning to find the energy to do a full-fledged Chronicle of the Collapse of one of the most just, uh, I, I, I don't even have the right word. There's some article uh, about word retrieval for long-term marijuana smokers uh, in the mainstream media today, and I can't retrieve the word out of my brain to come up with the, the idiocy of this embarrassing story from The Guardian from some clueless moron named Jeremy Caradonna with the hilarious title that would be hilarious if it weren't so tragic. The Corona Panic has revived hope that a more sustainable world is possible. Yes, ah. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, I'm going uh, to, I'm going to try to make it, uh, I'm going to try to make it through five paragraphs of this. This is, this insults my intelligence on a cellular level. Okay. Take it away, uh, Jeremy. He wrote some book on uh, the history of sustainability, this clueless moron. <clears throat> Historians of the future will see the last year as a major turning point in world history and perhaps even the dawn of a new era. Yes, the enforced economic slowdown of the corona panic, which inadvertently drove down emissions and induced simple living, simple living, and in parentheses after simple living, gardening sourdough, sourdough and local hiking, exclamation point, provides new momentum for recalibrating cultural values and changing the very trajectory of our globalized industrial society. Yes, in many ways, sustainability has been a success story. All right, we have a success story, sustainability has been a success story, it has driven an unprecedented increase in renewable energy. Yes. Revived local and organic food markets led to the start of the phasing out of single-use plastics. It has catalyzed circular e economic systems and sparked an unprecedented normalization and institutionalization of sustainability 
within governments, NGOs, corporations, and universities, making many organizations less wasteful, more energy efficient, and more committed to the triple bottom line, which means weighing equally, weighing equally social, environmental, and, don't forget, financial well-being. The rise of theories such as Kate Raworth's Donut Economics, Donut Economics, there you go, offer exciting new ways for such ideas to be further adopted. I'm not sure whether Donut Economics, uh, is that Krispy Kreme Donuts promising everybody a free donut if they get a Corona Panic vaccination? Is that a sustainable donut economy by rewarding obese morons to get a Corona Panic vaccine? I'm not sure. The donut economy, there, there you go. Uh, the donut economy, anyway. <clears throat> Moreover, sustainability has had an enormous impact on consumer behavior. Yes, an enormous impact on consumer behavior. Driving sales in everything from shade-grown coffee, environmentally friendly bath products, and don't forget fair trade chocolate to investor decisions, so-called ESG investments, ones that support environmental, social well-being, and good governance. Yes, increasingly consumers want to see their values reflected in their spending and investing habits. Yes. On balance, however, the sustainability movement has failed to solve the most pressing social, economic, and environmental challenge of the day, overpopulation and the human-fueled economic growth that sits at its, as its principal driver, hence the increasing urgency from activists and climate scientists alike. Well, guys, that was a joke, obviously. That was a joke. I was joking, okay? And that was called a little doomer humor. Uh, overpopulation is never mentioned anywhere in this story about sustainability, and my guess is overpopulation is never mentioned anywhere in the entire effing book on sustainability. That was a joke, obviously. They, they never mention overpopulation. It was, of course, the most pressing social, economic, and environmental challenge of the day, climate change, and the fossil-fueled economic growth that sits at its print as its principal driver. Yes, never mentioning that overpopulation is the driver of climate change. <clears throat> the Paris Climate Agreement was certainly a win for sustainability. It, it, uh, guys, uh, I, I, I literally cannot go on with this crap. Uh, the Guardian needs to be slapped. But anyway, I, I, you know, I could sit here, I, I could spend an hour, I could spend all night uh, breaking apart this absurd uh, crap uh, in the Guardian. I, I, I could spend the rest of my night 
tearing this uh, this ridiculous uh, is propaganda the right word even? Uh, I, I I don't know why uh, the Guardian is spinning uh, this. Uh, why the Guardian is, is spinning this web of deceit? That this is pure crap. In any way. As uh, much as I would uh, enjoy laughing at it, I want to puke. So we're moving on to, uh, I just, we're just going to read this story instead. I'm just pretty much going to read this one uh, because I've had enough of that last one. Coming from the BBC. Take it away, BBC. We're going to go from the Guardian to the BBC. Tasmanian Devils devastate penguin population on Australian island. A project to preserve endangered Tasmanian devils on a small island has backfired after the predators killed seabirds in large numbers, a conservationist group says. A small number of devils were shipped to Maria Island east of Tasmania in 2012. The move aimed to protect the mammals from a deadly facial cancer that had driven them towards extinction. The devils have recovered since, but the island project has come at a cost. The introduction of the devils to the island had a, quote, catastrophic impact on one or more bird species, close quote, according to BirdLife Tasmania, a local conservation organization. Um, citing a government survey, BirdLife Tasmania said a population of little penguins that numbered 3,000 breeding pairs in 2012 has disappeared from the island. This is Dr. Eric Wohler, a researcher for the group, quote, losing 3,000 pairs of penguins from an island that is a national park that should be a refuge for this species basically is a major blow, close quote. Dr. Wohler said the outcome was no surprise given what research shows about the introduction of mammals to oceanic islands. In 2011, a report by the Tasmanian Department of Primary Industries, the Department of Primary Industries, Parks, Water and Environment, there, there's quite the Tasmanian Department of Primary Industries, Parks, Water, and Environment suggested that the introduction of the devils would have, quote, a negative impact on little penguin and shearwater colonies on Maria Island, close quote. Last year, a paper published by the Biological Conservation Journal said the devils had, quote, eliminated a colony of shearwater a species of seabird nesting on the island, said Dr. Waller, it is very clear that the devils have had a catastrophic ecological impact on the bird fauna of Maria Island. Close quote. Uh... The mammals were moved to the island under the Save the Tasmanian Devil program, a joint initiative of the Australian and Tasmanian government. Tasmanian devils are classified as an endangered species by the IUCN, which keeps a database. But Dr. Wohler said their numbers had recovered in Tasmania and on the Australian mainland, where devils were born for the first time in thousands of years last month. Given this, Dr. Wohler said removing 
the mammals from Maria Island would, quote, not have any adverse consequences for the devil. A Tasmanian government spokesperson said the program would, quote, continue to evolve in line with new knowledge in science and emerging priorities. However, the spokesperson added, quote, Maria Island remains an important part of the broader devil program to help restore and maintain an enduring and resilient wild devil population in Tasmania. That is from the no comment necessary. I do not have the heart to read the story about this clueless moron out there in Southern California. Uh, I, I guess what he's done, he, I'm assuming it's a he, uh, this clueless moron has uh, apparently attacked at least 30 pelicans and broken their wings. Some idiot is running loose on the beaches of Southern California and they and and they're trying to figure out how this idiot is, is catching these pelicans. He's not killing them. What he's doing apparently, he catches the pelicans and breaks their wings. And you wonder why I want humans to go extinct. But uh get out there and enjoy your uh, Tasmanian devils while you still can. Would you like to go get that Tasmanian devil like that? You get to that Tasmanian devil like that. Get to Tasmanian devil. Here's a pop. I'm going to get to that Tasmanian devil. It's going to be a long rocket ride of a summer. Welcome aboard. Put your seat belts on. Yes, you crazy dog. Please, pop. It's time for my dinner. Bye, guys.